And uh, here we go. Oh boy. Oh. What oh, wow. the shit is that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, ladies and gentlemen, it's me, Ludo McGillicuddy. <laughs> My legal counsel from the firm of Ray Ray and Huber. Yep, has advised me that a medley of Beatles songs is not public domain. In fact, it would cost us... Oh, blah, dee, oh, blah, da, that's a lot of Benjamins. <laughs> so instead, I wrote a different quip song medley. Great, go ahead, we need to really keep this moving. Unfortunately, so just... Manchester United, my new medley was all based on the music of R. Kelly, Chris Brown, and Kid oh, Rock. No. No. And my counsel advises me that their music is, at best, problematic. <laughs> yeah, that's good counsel. Are you ready, my chemical romance? <laughs> All right. Solid. Oh, I can't snap. <laughs> I can't snap in these, can I? <laughs> A quip gum is minty fresh, and it's really fun to chew. I really wish you would get away and maybe say I do. Ooh! It helps prevent cavities, freshens breath, and it's sugar free. I must have done something bad in a past life to have you next to me. Oh! <laughs> As I do, but do, come on, legal counsel. As I do, but do, but do, beep, bop, do, but do. Oh, my goodness. Why are you a flower today? <clears throat> There's a bee story in the quip ads oh. that I'm slowly turning into a sunflower. <laughs> it's an unstated bee story. <laughs> That's just an extra layer. Wait, have you already read this? It's so unnecessary. I know, but it's so unnecessary. <laughs> That's for the hardcore fans. Oh my God. They, they probably have been noticing it for a while now. Has anybody noticed it? Already? It's been going for a while. Oh my God. What? What? <laughs> okay. Some bits are for them, and some are for me. <laughs> As you progress, kind of falling in line behind both Orem and the voice of the Tempest, you notice that as she walks, the cloak that she wears, this mantle of beautiful shifting colors of leaves, it trails just gently across the ground behind her. Um, it doesn't push through and leave a mark across the dirt and dust, but you see where she walks, there's almost like a, a five to 10 second period where grass seems to grow and kind of leave just the faint image of where she walks behind, uh, this uh, little uh, touch of nature just uh, kind of uh, blooming in her wake. I am on the verge of tears right now. <laughs> Fern hair is a bit of a jack of all trades. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I do lots of, lots of, lots of so many things. I can sense the odd fey nature around you with but a glance. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You're very wonderful. I just, oh, I really gosh. like this piece. Thanks. Um, <laughs> anyway. She's really good with um, uh, animals and stuff, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, me too, actually. Oh, really? Wow. <clears throat> Keeps walking a bit. <laughs> you, I. Hi. I don't think I've ever met an automaton with so much personality. Oh, uh, I get that a lot. It's because I was uh, uh, I was created as an ancient killer uh, <laughs> a thousand years ago, uh, an assassin um, by okay. a, by a by a long gone uh, land or, or uh, mm. civilization. But I forgot all that, and now I'm just trying to be helpful. Well, I'm I'm happy to hear that you've chosen a different path. Uh, you know, uh, redemption is often a, a wonderful aspiration. I have a tangled relationship with the gods, you could say. Are they trustworthy, or some may be, but I tend to be more of a believer in, well, the world we call home. How can you tell which ones to trust? Sometimes you have to meet them. You've met the gods. A few. She keeps walking. Whoa! whoa. Ladna is a, a, a special case. Uh, uh, she's already been brought back once before. Oh, she right. came back as something a little d different than she was the first time, if that makes sense. She kind of nods. I'm quite familiar with those who find different paths through fate when they return. 
I don't know if that makes things more difficult or, or, or less difficult. I don't either. Complicated. Everything always gets more complicated. She kind of breathes heavy for a second, kind of lost in thought, <clears throat> and continues walking towards the castle. Well, uh, Lady Cassandra is still meeting in Lyrengorn. Uh, I do believe the Lord is in. The Lord is in, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> well, but regardless, regardless. Shit. Lord Dorolo. Yes, Captain Kynan. <laughs> The captain. The captain is kind of. Thank you so much, and good luck with your uh, your rogue faction. Thank you, uh, and good luck with your not murdering people. Uh, it's been, I think, <clears throat> six days since uh, I've tried to murder. That soon. Really that well. soon. I thought that really was well. further back. That's yeah. this is a recent change. Well, okay. I mean, one day at a time. One day at a time. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I I should not judge. I am Lord Percival Frederick Stein von Musel Koloski Dorello III, architect of enlightened progress of the Chamber of Whitestone. And as the doors close and Merkeleth was leaving, suddenly Percival, as you say that, looks past you and goes, Darling, I told you not to do that. And uh, behind you, you can glance and see slipping into the door what looks to be a young girl uh, in a pale blue dress, deep red skin and these horns that curl up from the middle of the head through dark hair, <laughs> holding what looks to be a small doll in one arm. Sorry, Father. I was just curious who these strangers were with Keyleth. I'm she was brought to a dinner by, um, by a woman named Delilah. You see, like, the left eye twitch a bit at the mention of the name. He reaches up and pulls the glasses off his head for a second, and sets them on the desk. If every person came to me in this town, who lost someone important to them and demanded they be brought back to life. Not only would that destroy the order that we all fight so hard to maintain, but it would become an impossibility. She's not any person. She's special. She was chosen. You say the word chosen, and he looks down at her and swallows hard. Indeed she was. I know it's early, wake her up if it is, but if you could please summon Pike Trickfoot. <gasps> To the castle. I need her to weigh on a matter of life and death. That's an impressive um, clock tower you have out front. Yes, it is. Who's the uh, who's the skilled son of a bitch behind that one? No. <laughs> That's quite a feat of craftsmanship, something I have a keen eye for. In fact, if it would not be out of line, I'd love to make a, a singular piece for your, your daughter there. When you're ready, present some examples of your work and we can see if there could be an arrangement made to uh, commission you for some pieces. He made this. Okay, now here's the thing. <laughs> so it, it helps no, me, no, me convey uh, my emotions. It's, so it's, got, it's got practicality. There's educational applications, and then there's artistry. This I understand. Face. With, with all this due respect, like my, that book my daughter was reading was a medical journal. I think she may be a bit beyond. Um, mm. No, yes, of course. Faces. But well, smiling uh, means. The, this was a rush. Have you ever incorporated um, mechanisms? Mechanisms. Why, what? Mechanisms, mechanisms would you be speaking of? Gear-based locking mechanisms, uh, plate tricks. Um. He does a right? metal working. <laughs> He's very old, he could go at any second. <laughs> but today could be the day. <laughs> More constitution saving throw. <laughs> Daddy, they were talking about the moon and they were talking about all sorts of strange things and people. Hmm. Crackpots. Crackpots. <laughs> Excuse me. I actually, um, <laughs> I, I just as a just as an example of what you could expect. I pull I pull out from behind my cloak and my harness. It's very oh, small. Sorry, it could fit in the palm of Jenny's <laughs> hand. Mm -hmm. You see a pair of half elven teenagers wearing hunting gear start pushing in, and one of them goes. You did not! I got two more than you! Shut up! And kind of begins running up the steps as you see this uh, kind of a young half elf man with like short hair who's just kind of looked like he's a bit pissy and running up in this uh, 
kind of equal age woman with kind of big, like a big curly mat of uh, brown hair and big glasses. Of course I got more than you. You're terrible at it. Every time we go out there. <laughs> and as they both rush up, uh, a third figure steps through. Another half-elven woman looks about in her 30s or so, dressed in a comfortable light blue blouse, gray pants, knee-high leather boots, uh, with a bow strung over her back. As you can see, her dark hair is pulled back and there is a black feather behind her ear. <clears throat> oh, Percy, darling, I did not realize we had company. Uh, could you also have someone go? We're Bell's Hells. We were brought here by um, the, the Tempest. Uh, the we... voice of the Tempest. Oh, I'm one of the... Here. She well, was. was. Just missed her. She's uh, shit. Busy. She's <laughs> off. She said she was off to Asilra or something. Mm. Well, that sounds about right. She's all over the place. You knew my father, uh, in-law, Derek. Indeed, I did know Derek. He was at our wedding, darling. <laughs> right, right. Yes, yes, he was. Uh, sorry, there's a lot of people were there, and a lot was going on. That must have been quite a ceremony. They both together say, "You have no idea," in unison. <laughs> Bell's Hell, it's a pleasure to meet you. I am uh, Lady Vic Solia de Rolo, Baroness of the First House of Whitestone, and uh, great, the mistress, great mistress of the Greyhound. Grand mistress, technically. <laughs> and I was like, no, I said it, I said it wrong. <laughs> Grand mistress. Grand mistress. You can see the resemblance. Yeah. Oh, shit. Between who and <sighs> what? She was the woman that oh. Lord was. She's very beautiful. You see a uh, a short gnomish woman of white hair that's kind of uh, pulled back into a messy bun that's kind of falling apart as she runs, and bits of it are kind of tangled behind, wearing this like uh, bright yellow sun blouse that kind of uh, drifts into a white apron. A little chubby around the face and these kind of meaty arms as she kind of charges up quickly. And she goes, Percy! Percy! <laughs> and you see the Lord kind of. Yes, Pike! <laughs> <laughs> what do you need? No to go out. It's early, you don't normally call me to the castle. I'm a little confused. Hi, I'm Pike. Hi, Miss Trickfoot. My name is Orem. It's really formal. <laughs> they seek the restoration of a fallen friend. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, <laughs> oh. So casual. Um, <laughs> it's it's been a little bit. Uh, um, Pike, you see, like pulls from the blouse uh, yeah. a chain that dangles, and there at the base of it, you see what looks to be a, a golden symbol that resembles these like flaming angelic wings. What's that? <laughs> oh, this is oh, just no. a symbol of my... Steal it. No. Steal it. No. No. I have a friend who's also a god, and this is what I used to Dude. talk to her. How many people know you gods in this town? Talk you just talk to this. You, have you talked to here. gods, too? Well, I mean, anyone can talk to a god. You just have to go and pray at a temple. Oh. oh, that doesn't sound as exciting. Lady Keyleth made it sound like... But I have actually like... talked to her. <gasps> what? So oh anyway, that's a long time ago. I'm just a baker now. Wait, a so baker that can bring someone back to life. Well, I didn't make any promises. And at this point now, she looks down and I'm like, oh no, this poor thing. And she kind of kneels down next to her and kind of like brushes the hair out of Laudna's face. She looked like that before she died. Yeah. She... <laughs> yeah. This is her. It's a little weird. Look, yeah. A little weird, but she, she killed once before. It takes all kinds. She was. Did you, were you at the. She was. She died in the tree, and then she was brought back. Lord Percival goes, She was on the sun tree, Pike. Oh. Oh. And you hear a voice from the stairs above. Oh. You see, just having stepped down the spiral staircase to the left where she had previously vanished. Lady Vexalia, kind of frozen, looking down. Percy, was this, was? It was you. She was you. She quickly steps down the staircase next to Pike and kind of leans down. We have to help them. We did this to her. We're the reason she was on that tree to begin with. Can I get like 
a few looks over at Vex, goes, Diamonds, yes, I'll be right back. And she <laughs> shakes out her pockets. <laughs> right. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Yeah, hold on. Walks off. She says, Okay, okay, uh, let's uh, make some space here. And she begins to. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've sat next to her, that's true. That's yeah, true. That's all. I can feel her soul. There's something else here. I'm trying to reach for her, but it's holding her back. It, I can't. Uh, Percy? And she pulls her hand back, and all the light <laughs> vanishes. Ladna oh. hits the ground, and per and you watch as Pike kind of like sits back a bit, her hand still out in front. Percy? There's two souls bound to this body, and I can't separate them. Not like this. Two souls? Yeah. And one of them is Delilah Briarwood. And we're going to go to break. Oh! Then it is done. She is to remain gone. No. What do you mean? That's not how this works. That's exactly how this works. Do you have any idea, any possible notion of what, what creature you would possibly be unleashing? No. Then you are one of the lucky few. There is no way we are bringing Delilah back into this world. Wasn't your soul held? By another? Yes. What did your friends do? Make a persuasion check. Ooh. With advantage. Terrible. Oh. Fucking garbage. Stop rolling those eyes. I'm sorry for the loss of your friend. I'm certain she was a wonderful woman, but whatever joy or smile she would bring back would be far outweighed by the death, the destruction, the torture, and upheaval that Delilah would bring should she return. I will not stand here and allow this. I will not, in my home, in my city, bring Delilah back, and that is final. She's been back. She's been back this whole time. He starts walking away. What if we could end her for good? Then do so, without my aid, and he continues to walk away. Darling, please, at least let them try something. She looks down and kind of like cradles Laudna's head in her hand and looks at her and kind of runs her finger along the ear cuff that forms the pointed elven ear. We both have some fault in this, don't we? Then tell me if you find a way that is satisfactory, but do nothing without my approval. Delilah stays gone. And he leaves. I'm going to follow Percy. Oh. You follow Percy? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not satisfied with the ending of that conversation yet. The issue with life is sometimes you have to deal with unsatisfactory ends. Do I look like the sort of person who doesn't know that? You look young. You have time to learn. You have no fucking idea. I don't like to lose. I would recommend getting used to the idea. Oh, I have. Let me fucking tell you, and I'm just going to keep walking up. Okay, as you walk up, his hand goes to the side of his coat. Yes, sir. That's fine. Yes, sir. I have lost fucking everything. Everybody. I have had a lifetime of bad hits, problems, lost people, promises fucking broken, people died. It is the background of my daily life. I have died. This is madness up here. This is not something that just fucking happens. This is what happens when the universe really doesn't like you and decides it wants to keep you around for a little while longer. Or at least that's what I used to fucking think. And then I met these fucking people and life changed in a very intense way. And I know you think I'm just gonna be like, I found love again, any of that bullshit, fuck no. The world got weird and there is weird shit happening out there and suddenly I'm feeling very small but it got really big out there, and for some strange fucking reason, that 
body down there is fucked and as corrupted as it may be, and it is, believe me, seems to be a part of this. So hope and joy and love and all of that shit, I don't give a fuck. That is not what I'm down there for. I'm down there for because it's important and it's necessary, and I have lost so many people. And I am not here begging for fucking any of them, many I've known longer than her. This is important. Clearly someone you don't fucking like thought it was fucking important, so maybe you should just pay the fuck attention. Have you said your piece? Yeah, unless you want to see something I have to offer. That's pretty much, I think that might be the, the end of it. The urge to destroy can be a very powerful one. My advice to you is one a few years your senior is see where you can refocus it to instead build and then protect it with every fiber of your being. Nothing else matters more. My children will not grow up in a world where that woman exists. Because if you all bring her back into this world and Delilah walks once more, I will send you all to the same place I will send her. To protect my family, to protect my city. You're a small fish in a big, big pond. Make some waves. And right at the moment, you also hear Ooh. You glance over to your right, and kind of right off to the side, what you didn't notice is a small furred creature that is looks grayed in a lot of its fur. You see uh, light bits of armor across its back, and it looks to be two other adult brown bears. These are bears, kind of curled up and waking to the side. The older one kind of going. <laughs> It's a good thing he's got arthritis. About 25, 30 feet from you. I'm gonna slowly walk up. He's a picture. You walk up to the bears? This is an ancient bear. Mm. Whatever happens, whatever occurs here, and I hope for the better outcome, I really do. Nothing's worse than losing someone very close to you. Okay, so your bodies will be here. Your bodies will remain here, but your spirits <laughs> will be put in the same place where your friend's spirit is. Oh, could it become permanent for us as well? Well, <laughs> she looks down and starts reading the scroll again. Like, well, uh, there is a cord that connects your spirit to your body while you're there. So protect it, because I think if yeah, yeah, okay, if something cuts the cord, then you actually die. So oh, so protect it. I'm gonna eat a muffin, drink some water, take a breath, and then we can begin. Pie trick with drinking water. Sure. <laughs> She's oh. having a little nippy nips. <laughs> She's <Old>. ready. <laughs> Would you be able to tell if he has a soul or a spirit or anything like that? Or well, I mean, yeah. Want me to check? You can just check. It's kind of my specialty. Was my specialty. I guess it kind of is. As a baker? Yes. But I don't want to distract from the task at hand. It's okay. She probably just requires your meat tongue for a component. <laughs> yep, that makes sense. <laughs> Open your mouth. Shoot. Ah, there you go. Finally, it's gone. gone Finally, oh, it's no. the end. It's growing no. back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate this so much. Uh, and then suddenly. <laughs> There is just light burning around you. And you look around, and there in front of you, you see the same kind of shape as Pike, but she is herself a burning silver ember of light. You see just the flames rising off of her, and this like set of fiery wings that just kind of drift in place where her eyes are, is just this, this glowing cavalcade of color and white light. And you see your arms, the, the shape of them, but it's just kind of like this strange, semi-translucent light. Not as bright as hers necessarily, but present, this kind of fuzzy sparkle. What does it mean? It means you're alive. You're brought back into the room. See, you're fine, ting ting. Whoa! What happened, what happened? I was crazy. I went to another place where I could see our spirit. She gave you drugs? 
Yes. Wow. I feel like I just have to tell you he's having a day he is never going to forget right now. His mind is entirely blown. You have no idea. I have no idea. Not to brag, but I'm used to blowing minds. <laughs> I'm so happy I could. Uh, I love a brag. Continue the trend. Oh, all right. Oh. Pike, darling, do you need any help? As Pike's over there with a flask, like, oh, no, I'm good. Uh, just get ready. Pike, darling, can I have a sip of that? She takes her own swig. <laughs> no, no, I love it. That's great. <laughs> Old habits. Old habits. And as you're looking at the pattern of the ceiling, you watch it just rocket away from you. You instinctively try and move your head, but you can't. You're just kind of locked in place, like a sleep paralysis is taking your body. You just watch the roof get further and further and further away and further away. You see the shape of FCG is a little more ethereal, a little more fuzzy. It's not the metal that's defining the spirit, more like the shape that would reside within is taking form. Feet? Still kind of a kind of a, a singular Just wheel. Two little feet sticking out from where your wiener <laughs> would be. Oh, oh, two T-Rex feet. Stick your tongue out. Is there one? No. Okay. There's never been one. There's no tongue. It's not canon. Your <laughs> tongue. You carefully begin to step through the foul forest that surrounds you, heading towards this structure. As you do, you hear the whispers getting louder. Gather them up. Burn it down! Witch, witch is here! It is a ramshackle shack here in the middle of these woods, dangling their little trinkets and look to be uh, bones and uh, tools. And that window, that window, and there on the table you see a few tools. Looks like a pair of scissors or like a little knife. You see what looks to be the body of a rat. And you see, kind of on the stool, this kind of shadow shape, this one, like almost like a like a black flame that's kind of barely holding there, kind of flickering in and out of existence. You don't feel like she's there, but you almost make out the shape of Laudna sitting in this shack. Our mm -hmm. souls are one. I can just uh, you, you. So you have on uh, uh, a D six that you can add to anything for uh, for the next bit of time. Thank you. Okay. Does that finish your turn? Uh huh. It does. All right. And well, I can give you another four temporary hit points. points. Oh, all right. And I can give you Ashton another four temporary hit points. Bungie, you're keeping some shit going yeah, on. Technically, yeah. greater restoration can restore max hit points. Oh. But none yeah. of us have it. No, it's not taking away points from me. It's just. Stressing me out a little. <laughs> yeah, greater, oh, greater uh, rest. You don't need those temporary hit points that fucking bad. Tell us what you're feeling. I, I was here, <laughs> and I went to here. Now I'm like. <laughs> Maybe. Oh. <laughs> Do you want to keep this? I'm okay. I'm okay. Oh God. You climb deeper down the tunnel, and the tunnel begins to open. You're going down, but as you step out, you see sky like a purplish. Faintly obscured starscape, almost. And on the sides beyond it, you can see what looks like more trees or roots. It's hard to tell, all kind of pushing downward. Am I actually looking up from underneath trees, leafless trees? You are, and as you step forward, the gravity seems to shift now where all of a sudden you're emerging from the floor, maybe about 30 feet from where this tunnel is. A wall, partially crumbled. Beyond that wall, you can see what looks to be the rooftops. And then not far beyond them, a massive, leafless tree of hundreds and hundreds of bare branches looming over this shaded city with a faint bit of green light just drifting out like a mist. And that's where in tonight's episode. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. You rat bastard. No. Shadow awaits the